must, must have, have a code that, that you can live by. And so, become yourself, because the past is just a goodbye. Teach your children well, their father's hell. Did slowly go by and feed them on your dreams, the ones they picks, the ones you'll know by. Don't you ever ask them why? If they told you, you would cry. So just look at them and sigh. Those tender ears can know the fears that your elders grew by. And so please help them with your youth. They seek the truth before they can die. Teach your parents well. Their children's hell will slowly go by and feed them on your dreams. The ones they pick, the ones you'll know by. Don't you ever ask them why? If they told you, you would cry. So just look at them and sigh And know they love you Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the First Unitarian Church of Hamilton. We welcome those of you here in the sanctuary and those who have opted to join us through Zoom in your house slippers. My name is Irene Kay, and I'm your service leader this morning. I want to thank the service team, which includes our special guest speaker, Yvette Salinas, from the uh, Unicamp of Ontario, our religious educator, Tim Versteeg, who will read our story for all ages, our music ministers today are Mary Ann Forbes, George Zavarese, Beverly Horton, and DJ Moon. And our intrepid tech team, Monica Bennett, Brian Carey, Josh McIntyre, John Elliott, and Bruce McPherson. <laughs> they do a bang up job. <laughs> our online folks are muted, so I'd ask you all to do the same here. Make sure your devices are off or on silent. <clears throat> Today's service is streaming live from our church in Hamilton on the sacred lands of many peoples. We live upon the traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. This land is covered by the Dish With One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, which was an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. As settlers, we continue to benefit from this land and its resources. As settlers, we must ask ourselves how or if we have shared and cared for the earth and its gifts. Facing the truth is hard, and truth must come before reconciliation. We welcome you here today, whatever the circumstances of your life, in the many ways we identify as people, and in the diversity of how we love and live. In this house of faith, we are all included as we search for truth, build community, and strive to make the world a better place for all. Today is Unicamp Sunday, and to enter our time of worship, I offer these thoughts on children 
by Unitarian Universalist minister Gary Kowalski. Children widen the circle of our being in ways that are limitless. Every baby that's born connects us to our history, our own parents, grandparents, and unknown forebears who brought new life into the world in each successive generation. Every baby that's born links us to the future, to a world yet to come that belongs to our descendants and that we hold in trust for our posterity whom we will never know. Each child connects us to nature, to the innocence and exuberance of a world always hatching newborns, kittens and pups and lambs and babes. Each child reminds us of the kinship we share with people of other lands and races who love their young as purely and tenderly as we do. Each child connects us to the universe, to the holy mysteries of birth and death and becoming from which we all emerge. Children widen the circle of our being in ways that are limitless. I invite our guest speaker up to help light the chalices. Welcome, Yvette. Each time we gather, we light a chalice. It reminds us that we are entering sacred space and time together. It reminds us of our connection to Unitarian Universalists all over the world. Please join us in our chalice lighting words. May this flame be our light of friendship and love. Thank you. Our opening hymn this morning is number 94, What is This Life? lovely day. I'm really hoping it's not raining out there because we're supposed to be going outside. <laughs> but we shall see. Um, our story today is drawn from our Unitar one of our Unitarian Universalist storybook, A Lamp in Every Corner. It's by Janine K. Gross Groschmeyer. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Um, and it's about our seventh principle, which of course is the interconnected web of life, or as they say in one of our children's versions of the principles, that we care for the Earth's lifeboat. And the story is called, And It Is Good. On a day not so very long ago, in a place not so very far away, a grass seed lay waiting. All through the cold, dark days of winter, the seed waited, covered by a blanket of earth. In the spring, when the air was warmed by the sun and the land was watered by the rain, the seed began to grow. It grew roots deep in the earth. It grew a delicate, pale green shoot up into the air. And as the days went by, the shoot grew into a firm stalk which waved in the hot summer breeze. It grew bright green leaves that opened to the sunshine and then grew darker green as more days went by. It grew and grew and grew until the seed was a tall stem of grass and was ready to make seeds of its own. 
In the fall, when the nights turned cool and the leaves on the trees flamed red and orange and gold, the grass plant knew it would soon be dying, and so it set free its seeds. They traveled on the wind above field and stream and hill. Some of them slowly settled to the ground in a meadow where they lay waiting, covered by a blanket of earth, and it was good. Now in that place, not so very far away, a small field mice, mouse was looking for food. Winter was coming and the mouse was hungry. He went here and he went there, sniffing his way through the meadow, ears perked, eyes open, whispers, whiskers quivering, careful and cautious always, for there are many creatures that will eat a mouse. And as he sniffed and nibbled and then sniffed some more, he found a few of those grass seeds that lay covered by the blanket of earth. So he dug them up, scritch, scratch, and he ate them. And it was good. Now in that place, not so very far away, a snake was hunting. Winter was coming and she was hungry. She went here and she went there, gliding through the faded fallen leaves from the trees and tasting the air with flickerings of her forked tongue. She tasted the scent of a mouse and followed the scent to the meadow. And after a while she found him, so she caught him. Quick snap in her jaws and she ate him. And it was good. <laughs> now in the sky, high above that place, not so very far away, a hawk was searching. Winter was coming. And the hawk was hungry. He went here and he went there, soaring on the wind with outstretched wings, looking down to the earth far below. And at the edge of the meadow, he saw the snake gliding through faded fallen leaves. So he folded, folded his wings and he plummeted straight down to the ground. And he caught that snake, snatch catch in his fiercely curved claws. And he ate her. And it was good. The days went by, and in that place, not so very far away, the sun no longer warmed the air. Instead of rain, snow fell. The last of the leaves fell from the trees. The grass froze and died. Winter had come. The hawk soared on outstretched wings, lifted high by the winter winds, hunting. But he was an old hawk. His wings did not beat so strongly as they used to. His eyes did not see so clearly. His hunts did not go so well. One day, he plummeted to the earth for the last time, and he died, and it was good. The body of the hawk lay on the ground all wintered long, covered with snow. When spring came, the sun warmed the air, and the rain watered the land. Flies buzzed in the air, ants scurried over the ground. Spring was here, and they were hungry. The ants and the flies found the body of the hawk. The flies laid their eggs in it, and the eggs hatched into maggots. The days went by, and the body of the hawk slowly disappeared, the flesh and feathers eaten by ants and maggots, and the bones chewed on by small animals. And whatever was left provided food for bacteria and mold. In just a few weeks, the body of the hawk had completely melted back into the earth, and it was good. Now in the earth where the hawk had melted, the seed lay waiting. As spring turned into summer, and as the sun warmed the air and the rain watered the land, the seed began to grow. It shot a pale green shoot up into the air. It pushed roots deep into the earth, which was made up from the body of the hawk who had eaten the snake, who had eaten the mouse, who had eaten the seeds, and it was good. So remember, in that place, not so very far away, and in all the places all around, there is sun and there is rain. There are seeds and mice and snakes and hawks. There are ants and maggots and bacteria and mold. There are crocodiles and humans and plankton and daffodils and mushrooms. And they all eat from each other. They all live and they all die. And it is good. That's the end of our story. So today we are having a little treat for the CYRE um, because, as some of you know, our fellowship hall is currently being um, rented by Elections Ontario for their advance polls, so we do not have our space. So as part of our fifth principle, which is about the democratic process, last week we took a bit of a democratic vote on what we wanted to do this week. Um, and ma mainly the vote was whether we wanted to be outside or inside and what sort of activities we would have, but there was a strong write-in vote by the children of CYRE and the youth of CYRE for Baskin-Robbins. 
Now, as a democratic process, we did not want to ignore the voices of our constituents. So we talked a little more about this and how it may or may not occur. And one of our volunteers today, Kelly Wolf, who was also volunteering last week, said, I drive right by Baskin Robbins. And we said, oh, OK, Kelly, well, that's great. <laughs> so Kelly has brought a little treat for folks. There is sorbet, which is lactose free. And for anybody who can't do those, I do have alternatives as well. We are going to try to go outside if it's not raining. So we will meet once I've finished speaking, if I ever finish speaking, um, I will. Uh, we're going to meet by the doors over there. Maybe Kelly can stand, Kelly and Vanessa will be by the doors. And we're going to go to my office and collect what we need. If for some reason it's raining outside, we will be in the foyer. We will try to be quiet. <laughs> but as a democratic process, if we're making a little noise, you're going to have to bear with us today because we got nowhere else to go if it's raining. All right. Okay, so if I can get the kids and the youth to join me over there, or join Kelly and Vanessa, we will go see what will occur. In this free faith tradition, we are the support and resources of this congregation. Our gifts and donations sustain the many ministries of this church, a community we have chosen to join and support. We will now receive our offering while we listen to our music ministers.
Your gifts in support of our ministries to one another and to the community are appreciated. Thank you. Now is the time for meditation and contemplation. Following our reading, there will be a few moments of silence, followed by music. I invite you to take a deep breath into the present moment. Close your eyes if you wish and rest in the stillness. This morning's reading is A Blessing of Darkness and Light, written by Amy Zucker Morgenstern. Blessed is the dark in which our dreams stir and are revealed. Blessed is the dark of earth where seeds come to life. Blessed are the depths of the ocean where no light shimmers, the womb of all earthly life. Blessed is the light into which we awake, the light that sparkles on the waters, that calls the tree forth from the seed and calls the shadow forth from the tree. Blessed are we as we move through darkness and through light. That was wonderful. <laughs> I don't know where you all went, but I was far away. <laughs> it brings us now to our guest speaker, uh, Yvette Salinas. Um, this is a brief little bio of, of Yvette, for those of you who don't know her, I know some of you do. Uh, Yvette grew up in South Texas, where she studied elementary education. And after moving to Canada in 2006, she used the time waiting for a worker's permit to, vol to volunteer for schools and local organizations. Those early Canadian experiences led to further, week, sorry, further, further work with local nonprofits and the religious education team at the Unitarian Church of Montreal. Further opportunities presented themselves, and long story short, Yvette now works as executive director for Unicamp of Ontario, the sole, own, sole UU owned and operated campground in Canada. Unicamp has been serving UUs of all ages, most every summer for over 50 years, through its kids camps, leadership and training, adult programming, retreats, and more. 
Welcome, Yvette. Good morning. Thank you for welcoming me here today. Um, I'd like to start my time here with a story, a true story, one that hardly anyone knows. It may not make much sense at first, but trust me, it'll all come together eventually. You just have to have faith. On November 28th, 2018, my family and I were suffering from a bit of cabin fever. We'd been stuck inside for days while a steady rain had droned on and on outside our tiny cottage in the country. At some point, I perked up and asked if we could take a drive somewhere, anywhere, just to beat the monotony. We all piled into our truck and headed off the freezing rain pattering on the roof. Nonetheless, our spirits began to lift fairly quickly. <clears throat> Not too far along, however, it happened. Our all-season tires hit a patch of ice on the road. The truck and us in it careened back and forth between the lanes, narrowly missed an oncoming car, and headed to the ditch. Just as we left the road, we hit a large rock, which sent the truck crashing onto its side. We slid a few meters further and finally came to a stop. Yeah. <laughs> For a long time, we just lay there, listening to the rain splattering the passenger side windows, kind of just thankful we were all relatively OK. Eventually, I unclicked my seatbelt, stood on the steering wheel, and pushed the door open slowly, which is a lot harder than you'd think when it's on its side. <laughs> I actually ended up injuring my arms and shoulder in the process, but was still too pa panicked to register the pain then. Long story short, the next few hours were something of a blur. Help showed up, and then I was headed home to the city on a night bus with my two kids, trying to maintain a calm demeanor so that they'd settle to sleep and be able to get to school the next morning. Then I tossed and turned all night trying to get some rest because the next day was my first day as executive director of Unicamp of Ontario. <laughs> See, I told you it was going to make sense. <laughs> yeah. So while the outgoing ED listed endless instructions regarding who and what I needed to know to get by in my new role, I vividly remember how my body ached. Nearly four years later, I still tend to look back on those first few days and laugh. Like, if I could handle something as terrible as a major car accident, then go on to lead a 50-year-old organization, that must mean I'm a pretty tough cookie, right? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Since the pandemic, my outlook has changed considerably. I sometimes get the credit for getting Unicamp through the pandemic, but Unicamp only survived because there was a whole team an entire community of folks who work together to help Unicamp weather the biggest of storms. Deeper cleaning, setting up outdoor spaces with much better airflow, providing quality programming for children and youth that had had the worst year ever, completely changing the way meals were prepared and served. At the end of the 2021 season, so many of us let out a huge cheer or a sigh of relief. The board, volunteers, and community members all felt proud of what we'd accomplished, especially my staff. Here's where I feel like a proud mama. We got counselors, cleaners, cooks, program staff, property staff, ops and kitchen crew, crews. We're all acting as one unit, and Unicamp wouldn't be the same without any one of us. Take Jenny, camp director extraordinaire. Our working relationship can best be described as, I know she has my back, and I've got hers. And it's basically the same for the others. I can rely on my staff team to get what needs to be done, done. And they can count on me to put whatever supports are needed in place in order to allow them to do their jobs. To make it clear, the UC staff goes above and beyond every single season. I only just realized it during the pandemic. And then it finally clicked that that was really how I'd managed to come on board a new organization when I just managed to survive a fair amount of trauma. I had leaned on so many others for support back then. 
I look back on those first few days in November 28 and can only feel gratitude. Gratitude that I had family who were able to take the wrecked truck to the garage, that my kids didn't make a fuss when our plans changed so suddenly, that the outgoing ED mail repeated information over and over and over until it clicked, that the camp director, Michelle, took on most of the work for that summer. My list could go on and on. Of course, we're now starting summer 22, or COVID summer three. And there will be lots to deal with, I'm sure, lots that may yet catch us completely by surprise, but most of you don't have to think about that. We've got things covered. What about you? If you're a unicamper, you know all about the magic of returning to camp after the incredibly long winter. There's just something really special about knowing unicamp that is still there resting on 638159 Prince of Wales Road. It's like returning home. Even turning into the entrance and taking the long drive down the hill is exhilarating. Open up the car windows and take in the scent. Roll up to the admin building and wave at whoever's there. See old familiar buildings, hopefully old familiar friends. If you're not a unicamper, please give us a try. I know it's hard being a newcomer to any community, but have faith that your faith will connect you to what Unicamp is at its center, you, you. You'll be welcomed with open arms. If not by the people, then by the land itself. Let the nature at Unicamp envelop you. I won't say that's what it's there for, but it can feel like that sometimes. Unicamp of Ontario.ca. Give us a try. <laughs> okay, to wrap up this homily, allow me to give one piece of, of advice. Whether or not you're a Unicamper, I encourage you to find your people. Those people who will help you get through the challenges you face rather than trying to handle it on your own like a tough cookie. Find that safety net so that you won't have to deal with car crashes or pandemics or health issues or single parenthood or any sort of anything on your own. Um, so thanks for your support of Unicamp. Thanks again for having me here. And let's believe in summer together. Thank you, Yvette. Very inspiring. Um, our next hymn is number 21 For the Beauty of the Earth.
How joyful to have live music in the sanctuary. <laughs> Thank you so much. We now extinguish our chalice, but the flame of compassion still burns brightly. Our benediction this morning is number 681 from the Gray Hymnal. Deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the infinite peace to you. How did you say that? Here's to summer. Here's to believe in summer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to shake, shake it up, shake it up a little bit. Shake it up a bit. Here comes, Here comes summer. Hey, 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 let's wake up. As I walk through this wicked world. Searching for light in the darkness of insanity. Ask myself, is all hope lost? Is there only pain and hatred, misery? Cause each time I feel like this inside, there's one thing I want to know. But what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Oh, what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Yeah! Hey, 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 hey! As I walk on through troubled times, my spirit gets so downhearted sometimes. So where are the strong? And who are the trusted? And where is the harmony, sweet harmony? Cause each time I feel it slipping away, just makes me want to cry. Oh, what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Oh, 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 what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Yeah! Hey, 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 hey! So where are the strong? And who are the trusted? And where is the harmony, sweet harmony? Cause each time I feel it slipping away Just makes me want to cry But what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Oh, what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Oh, what's so funny about peace, Thank you. Believe in summer. Thank you. Believe in summer.